Hi guys, welcome back to the Page Master. You might remember that when we left off, Richard had ventured into the horror section. How do you think he feels about being there? Well, when we left him, a hideous book cr creature had fallen down and splatted right in front of them on the porch. Ah! Richard and Adventure both screamed. The creature was as terrified as they were. It let out a blood-curdling scream, too. Although it wasn't a monster, it certainly wasn't pleasant to look at. Like adventure and fantasy, it was a living book. But this book was in a pitiful shape. Its spine was twisted and its face was hideous. The name Horror was scratched in red on its cover. Adventure bravely stepped in front of Richard and drew his sword. Stand back, boy. I'll give this hunchback a taste of adventure. Sanctuary, sanctuary, the horror book cried. He scrambled up the bell chain and hid behind the molding over the doorway. Come on down, you dog-eared scalawag. Adventure jabbed his sword up toward the hidden book. Oh, put that thing away. You're frightening him, Fantasy said as she fluttered up to the top of the door. Come out, come out, wherever you are, Fantasy sang in her most motherly voice. A sad, childlike voice cut through the darkness. No, I know why you screamed. It's because I'm, I'm horrible. I scared you. Hey, do I look scared? Fantasy was buffing her fingernails. You're not scared? Horror's voice, horror's crooked head rose above the opening. Of course not. She opened, offered her hand. Come on down. Nuh-uh, no, horror pointed down at Adventure. He wants to hurt me. Him? Fantasy dismissed Adventure with a gesture. That little guy can't hurt anybody but himself. Come on down. Horror studied Fantasy. He decided that she looked very friendly. Okay, he said, stepping out of the molding. He reached out and lost his balance. Down he went, screaming again. This time, horror landed in Richard's arms. Here, take him! Richard held the book out to fantasy. I, I'm sorry, I scared you. Horror cowered, covered his dreadful looking face with his twisted hands. I'm so horrible, he moaned. Fantasy pinched horror's cheek. You must never judge a book by its cover. When he heard this, horror smiled his horrible smile. Look, said fantasy, he's smiling. That's a smile? Richard sounded doubtful. So even though Horror's name is Horror, what kind of an attitude do you think he seems to have? What's his character like? Yeah, not all that brave, right, compared to Adventure? All right, all right, tea time's over. Adventure was getting impatient. Let's start navigating this here house. Horror leapt out of Richard's arms and ran up to the house. Pressing up against the door, he blocked the way. No, you can't go in there. And why not? asked Adventure. It's scary inside. Ha! I ain't afraid of nothing. Adventure puffed out his chest and slashed his sword through the air. Horror turned to Richard. I I'm afraid. Of what? Richard was beginning to feel sympathetic toward this book. For once, there was somebody who seemed to be just as afraid as he was. Horror began to list his fears as he pointed, one by one, to his crooked, triple-jointed fingers. I'm afraid of the dark? Dentists? Butterflies? Cucumbers? Cucumbers? That's one that Richard hadn't thought of. I know just how you feel, he said. Horror always has sad endings, Horror stated glumly as he twisted his foot and rocked back and forth just like a kid. Fantasy hugged Horror tightly. Now, now, she reassured him. I come from a world of happy endings. Why don't you come with us? Yeah, I bet you know the best way through the house. Richard was excited. Through the house? Horror looked frightened. You can do it, Fantasy offered encouragingly. Would you want to go through that house? Horror hesitated. Okay. He grabbed the doorknob, looking back at them for reassurance, then pushed the door in. As the door opened, a sliver of light cut across the dark room. Rats scattered into the shadows. Horror entered cautiously, followed by Richard, Adventure, and Fantasy. H hello Anybody home? Richard's voice filled the darkness. Nevermore! A croaky voice came out of the darkness, and a huge black raven swooped down over their heads. 
Richard in horror panicked. They made a grab for the doorknob, which fell off and rolled across the floor. They watched the sparkling crystal knob roll slowly into the house. It stopped abruptly under the boot of a tall, silhouetted figure. May I assist you in some way? asked the figure. Venture drew his sword, fearful that the mysterious speaker might be an enemy. But the figure stepped forward and turned up the flame of the gaslight fixture on the wall. The brighter light revealed a kind-looking middle-aged man. Fantasy primped her hair. Oh, uh, hello there, Mr. Doctor, Dr. Jekyll. Oh, you're a doctor. Fantasy was impressed. She twisted the bottom of her wand and out popped a lipstick. She quickly ran it over her lips. Uh, well, sir, Richard started to explain. We did ring the bell, but it's all my fault. Horror suddenly interrupted them. I was trying to help them find their way to the other side of the house. The other side? The phrase seemed to disturb the good doctor. He laid a hand on Richard's shoulder and led him deeper into the house. My boy, I derive no pleasure in telling you that you are in extreme danger. Danger? That was one of Richard's least favorite words. Even as we speak, forces of evil are lurking in this very room waiting to strike. Evil? Now Richard was really nervous. All human beings are possessed of both good and evil. Richard looked suspiciously at his friends. They looked suspiciously at, in, at each other. But enough of that. Dr. Jekyll walked over to a table covered with beakers and test tubes. Then he opened up an apothecary cabinet filled with more laboratory equipment. Anyone care to join me for a drink? The doctor poured a wet red liquid into a glass and added a touch of powder. The mixture fizzed and threw off small plumes of vapor. The compound changed to a dark purple, then faded to a watery green. Richard looked at the drink and shook his head. No. I'll have a go with you, Doc. Adventure licked his lips and smoothed his mustache with a hook. The doctor plopped an olive into the drink and handed it to Richard, who handed it to Fantasy. She took a whiff. The smell made her eyeballs roll together. She faked a smile, then turned to Adventure. Mm, sure seems like your kind of drink, she said, handing him the glass. Horror watched the exchange with drooling anticipation. Can I have the olive, please? Horror begged shamelessly. Adventure shoved Horror away. Stand back. This is a man's drink. Just the olive, that's all. Horror yanked on Adventure's arm, and the watery green liquid flew up into the air. Richard and his friends watched it travel across the room in a graceful arc and landed with a splash on the floor. Now look what you've done, Adventure pointed at the spilled drink. It was beginning to sizzle and burn its way through the hardwood floor. Richard whipped around to warn Dr. Jekyll not to touch his drink, but it was too late. The doctor began to stagger around the room, screaming and clutching his throat. He was gasping for breath. Richard knew that in a situation like this, you should call the poison hotline. He looked around for a phone, but he already knew he wasn't likely to find one in a 19th century haunted house. The doctor's eyes turned a fiery red. He flung his glass into the fireplace, and the fireplace turned into a roaring inferno. Stumbling forward, he placed a hand on Richard's shoulder for support. Richard looked at the hand. It was changing, growing thick and hairy. Dr. Jekyll, are you all right? Fantasy asked. The doctor's face was wretched and wrinkled and mad with anger. My name is Mr. Hyde, he shouted. His eyes, which had once looked so kind, were glazed over with hate. Richard's eyes were knocking together now. I think we'll, we'll be going, he said very politely. No one leaves this house alive, said Mr. Hyde. All right, when we come back, we'll see how the three books and Richard are going to make their way out of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's house. See you next time.